Non-invasive medical diagnostics are invaluable for both patients and providers. And we have seen incredible breakthroughs in this technology thanks to advances in materials research. Here to tell us more is Hassam Haik, winner of the 2025 MRS Impact Award. Thank you so much for being with us, Hassam. My pleasure. So why is it so important for materials researchers to develop non-invasive tools for medical diagnostics? Non-invasive uh, tools for medical diagnostics mean that we can, uh, in the future, make a detection of disease without the need for needle or a surgery or without any uh, invasive techniques. And that could happen uh, in inexpensive way, affordable way, and in real time. In a way that we can bring all the capabilities of the clinics inside the frame of uh, hospitals into the uh, body of the patient or near the body in their home or at their work and then we can follow up their health minute after minute and hour after hour and then we can have the capability and the probability to detect the disease at the very early stages where at those stages the treatment efficacy will be much higher for example if we capture the disease the lung cancer at the early stages, we can increase the survival rate from 10% to 70% using the same treatments which are currently available. And within this journey, the role of the material scientist is not important, it's foundational because all of this technology starts from those materials which can detect, respond, and interact with the human body and those biomarkers which can tell us about the disease existence from breath or skin or uh, 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 tears or uh, urine even. This is exciting. So how have advances in nanotechnology enabled new kinds of non-invasive diagnostics? The non-invasive diagnostics has been a while for a few decades in the hospitals, but never have advanced because of their big size and the infrastructure around them and because they're uh, really huge expenses. And then when we had the opportunity to engineer our material with nanotechnology and nanostructures, we could engineer the material to miniaturize the devices and to make them affordable and furthermore to bring more functions into the non-invasive techniques in a way that could bring uh, more uh, uh, accuracy, higher sensitivity and more specificity for those markers that we are aiming uh, to detect. And furthermore, to miniaturize all the technology and to bring it in scalable uh, approach, that means that we have uh, a technology that is not confined within the clinical centers and can get to billions of people, both in the developed countries and also in the developing countries where there is no access in many cases to uh, regular clinics or to uh, 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 diagnostic tools that we know uh, here in our daily life. So wearable devices, is that a possibility? Exactly, wearable devices is one of those uh, uh, technologies that we are speaking about without uh, having them invasive inside our skin. They're simply a kind of tattoo that you can put on your skin and they make the diagnosis. And this diagnosis is not a kind of luxury technology. It's a real need and the nanotechnology enable it. What medical conditions would you say would be most impacted by these developments? Our studies have shown that we can detect dozens of medical conditions by the non-invasive clinical uh, uh, conditions, um, uh, whether that uh, would be cancerous uh, uh, diseases such as lung cancer or gastro cancer or infection disease uh, or uh, inflammation disease. Today, part of these medical conditions uh, are uh, benefiting from uh, many of these technologies, such as the breath technologies and the skin technology. Um, and we have already a few uh, devices in the market. Others, such as lung cancer and gastric cancer, are right now in the road to be in the market throughout a few companies, part of which I have established by myself. Other ones, such as a neurodegenerative disease, such as Alzheimer and Parkinson disease, are right now in the research and development with some challenges because we want to detect those 10 years before they happen. And as such, we have uh, still some advancements to do before uh, we can bring them into the market. But we have right now promising news that this will be a reality in the near future. That is so awesome. So 
you've touched on this a little bit, but can you share a little bit more about the impact of this just on a global scale? These technologies, because they are inexpensive and affordable and can bring uh, real-time analysis uh, to our diagnostic world, uh, will really impact not only those people who can have an access to the clinics, but to those people who has no access to the clinics and to those people even that live in less than one dollar per day and have no electricity and no infrastructure water and no support. Just imagine that in the developing countries, we have three billion people that don't have an access to clinics. And I think a device that costs one and a half dollar, which we have already demonstrated, can be a great tool uh, to follow up the health of people in those places. And therefore we can bring more equality in health, not only for those people who has uh, 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 financial ability, but to those people who are really at poverty and to those people who are in refugee camps or urban slums and more and more. Hassam, thank you so much for sharing this with us and thank you for the work that you're doing. Sure. Thank you. You want more Matt Sai? Well, don't go anywhere. Click right here to watch all of our content from the 2025 MRS Spring Meeting. Have fun.